What is the biggest, most obvious symbol of the Wuhan virus pandemic? The mask. Now guess who's taking off the mask? Beijing, the capital of China, the country that gave the world this virus, has decided to go mask free. Let that sink in. Authorities in Beijing are telling people they can leave their mask at home. This is striking, even unimaginable in most parts of the world right now. But in China, it's part of a pattern. China, you see, is relaxing coronavirus rules at a rapid pace. Health authorities have issued new orders and a mask is no more mandatory. Are the people of Beijing celebrating this rare freedom? In a country where the word of the leader is the law, you would imagine the Chinese citizens would be more than willing to comply. I'm afraid you're wrong. The Chinese citizens have long unmasked their government's propaganda. So they will take official declarations of normalcy with a pinch of salt and a mask. This is Beijing. What do you see? People still wearing masks. These pictures were shot this morning. The people of Beijing have not ditched the mask. This is what a trust deficit looks like. The Chinese are once bitten twice shy of their government's handling of the pandemic. The health officials say Beijing is free of the virus. You can take off your mask. The people on the street are not so sure. When to take the mask off? It's hard to say. Now, if I'm at places with fewer people, such as parks or inside a compound in the morning, I will take off the mask. But if I'm in the public area where there are a lot of people around, I will keep my mask on. It gives me a sense of security. It is a norm now that people wear masks. For example, when we go outdoors or we take our kids to the park, we may take the masks off. But when we go to some enclosed places like the mall or the bus, we keep them on. Even if the pandemic is over, it is better to wear masks because it is a layer of protection for everyone. What do these voices tell you? The people of China, shaken by the Wuhan virus, are still afraid. But the Chinese state is desperate to signal normalcy. So it is opening up, removing restrictions, allowing large crowds to gather at hotspots. You must have seen these pictures. A pool party in Wuhan. A story that went viral around the world. Thousands of people at a water park, crowded in front of a stage. Forget masks and social distancing, they sank in the pool without a trace. Why were these images so powerful? Because this is the city that was the original epicenter of the virus. Wuhan, with its 11 million people, went into lockdown after it could no longer hide the virus. It has opened up since and is having pool parties. The rest of the world is still living with restrictions. This Saturday, football fans will return to China stadiums. 1,000 fans will be allowed to attend a high-profile football match. Another report says 2,000 will be allowed. Authorities say they will be let in only after being tested. But the point they're making is quite clear. All is well in China. The masks are off, the parties are on. This is a return to normalcy. Well, not so soon, we say. Here's something else that sounds normal to us. China caught lying red-handed, and that too in tiny Papua New Guinea. Let me tell you what happened there. 48 Chinese workers were banned from entering a mine. Why? Because they might test positive for the Wuhan virus. A Chinese state-backed firm insisted on sending them back to work. It said that they've been, they've been given a vaccine, a vaccine for the Wuhan virus, a vaccine that no one has seen yet, a vaccine that the world knows almost nothing about. Somehow, the China Metallurgical Group Corporation managed to get this vaccine and it injected it into its employees. It's hard to buy this story. Papua New Guinea has demanded an explanation. And now China says it has no clue what's going on. I'm not aware of the relevant situation you mentioned. What I want to emphasize 
is that China's vaccine research and development strictly follows the standardized scientific protocols and strictly carries out safety and effectiveness evaluations and ethical inspections. At the same time, in accordance with legal provisions and international common practice, the emergency use of vaccines can be carried out on the premises of scientific evaluation and verification, approval in accordance with the law and voluntary use. That statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is as hollow as China's claims of normalcy. It is far from normal. And that brings us to the two new major challenges that China is facing, two more crises that Beijing is trying to hide. 